Hello everyone, Professor Prinny here, and today we're going to go over the general strategy that my team used to S-rank the trigger version of the limited time quest mop-up up endless nightmare. And so without further ado, let's go into the actual preparation needed for this. So. First off, some of you, a lot of you actually, may want to get a very specific mag ability from here. Which a few of you may have seen happen a few times in your parties. And that's this one, Julius Snifter. This is the mag which will... Uh, suck all of the smaller enemies into whoops into your uh into its gravitational field so this is useful for all of this yeah it's just useful for all the smaller mobs that you'll encounter during the quest so Please just come again. just thinking uh, that some of you may want to be aware of that because we do use that ability quite a bit but not all of us have it and then next up you want to go to the alliance quarters go up to your tree take the attack buff if you want to be going through it fast, you need to be killing the enemies fast. And then finally, this one's a bit more optional, but if you've got the resources, might as well do it because every little bit helps. So you go to the culinary and hey, Ida here. Step right up. Open the culinary shop. Scroll down a bit until you see the stir fry and the marinade. These two items both give 100 melee range and tech power for 30 minutes. And depending on which one you decide to go with, it will either, either give an additional 50 HP or plus 5 PP. So take whichever one you'll need the most. Just craft however many you want and use it before you start the quest it lasts for 30 minutes so which is perfect for since the duration of the actual quest is 20 minutes max you'll get a lot out of it Come again. and then finally Good morning. when you head into the gateway ship for the actual quest You'll want to take the shifter drink as well. Take whichever one you can get. If you're premium, take the premium just take the premium two drink. And if you're a free player, take the shifter drink ZX. And keep go and keep rolling through it until you either get PP economization. or Photon Blast Acceleration. Either of those two will be fine. Photon Blast Acceleration will help to get your mags out faster. Probably not necessary if you play Luster in particular, I think. Because Luster has... I'm pretty sure has the increased... mag acceleration or something like that. But anyway, those are the most important thing preparations you need to get through this, so without further ado, let's jump onto the actual video of the winning run itself and then I can talk about how let me see. Uh there we go. Nope. Oh wait, I was already on it. Never mind. Ah, <laughs> right. So you so let's go over the team comp this run 
we went with two etoiles, a summon a phantom, and detect a luster. If your, uh, if your party, if the people you intend to go with are all super strong, you might not need a tector, but a tector really helps out a lot if you can get one. Especially since uh, shift their shifter is super strong, <laughs> and not only that, it 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 lasts for about three minutes for uh, most classes. So you're not gonna need to be using that for a lot, and potentially you could. You could ditch Sky Dance support and swap it with some something else just temporarily if you do bring a Tector. And as for the other three options, honestly, you could just pick whichever damage dealing classes you want. So, without further ado, let's begin. Oh, something else I should point out is whoever's hosting the trigger, make sure they have the fastest load times among you. It will be it's going to be very important for the final stretch of the of this quest. And I'll explain why when we actually get to that point. So right here, once you load into the forest area, rush ahead and kill all these Udans and Za Udans. And here, me and my uh, team split up into two groups. Two people taking out the rock bears that spawn and then two defending the ship. It's important to have people defending the ship because any damage uh, that the ship takes is going to cons uh, cost you time in the long run. And you want that ship to heal up as fast as possible so you can move on. So here as an etoile, I'm just using my connects pretty much immediately, so... Or for most of the rock bears anyway. Just so we can kill them faster. And then right here, if you've still got a bit of time to spare, might as well take the time to uh, help out with the mobs as well. Especially get back some of your PP. And then right here, you've got a ring of navrapies waiting for you to kill them. And then after you kill all of them, you get two sets of wolves to the north and south. As you could, uh, as you saw earlier back then, uh... oops, too far. Let's wait for it to go back a bit. As you can see here, our Tector used the Zondial to bring in uh, the wolves so we, could, so we could whack them all at once. And I used the Connect just to wipe them out. And then you could do a similar thing on the north ones as well. Then right here you deal with two uh, banter, with a Banser and a Banshee. So here, so right back there, I uh, switch, I turn my camera around so I'm facing the south Banshee. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because I was, at least before this, I was designated to, or at least I designated myself to be the one to take aggro of the south one. And the reason why I did that is so I can lure this boss with the other one so we could deal damage to both at once. Now it's very important to keep Ash alive in this part because if he dies twice if I remember correctly you will be forced to go the other uh you'll be forced to go on the right route and that'll take time and it'll kill your run at this point. So once I got aggro of the other one, I just joined the rest of my team to whale on the first, the north one. Unfortunately, this run, the south banshee wasn't cooperating, so we had to chase it down. Ideally, it would have joined us at the north, so we don't waste as much time traveling to the no uh, final part of this, the forest. So right there, it's very important to get that switch immediately. You want to be damaging the uh, Diabogryphus and the Berebos at once. So, as you, let me go back a bit. As you can see right there, I used my mag to... I used the Julia Snifter mag so I could suck up all of the smaller mobs together. And if I remember correctly, it also affects the Barabos as well, surprisingly. So that's very handy and helpful. We dispatch a lot of all of the small mobs, or most of them. And so all we have to do is focus on the Barabos and the Diab Diabogryphus. And then moving on, we have the volcanic caves. Now right here, I rush up ahead so I can uh, whack these full spawn a bit and make them run down to the south so we could start dispatching them all at once with our AoE. Again, Zondeal is a good choice to use if you can cast Tex as well as uh, Julius Nifter if someone's got theirs still available. And I also used my Etoile for heal while there was uh, time to use it. And so for this for this uh, mission you need to kill all the Boreals in the outer perimeter. If you look on the minimap right up here they're marked with the blue triangles, so you know which ones they are. And you need need be sure to get them within the time limit, because otherwise, you you will get an additional wave of mobs after this, and that will also kill your run. So at this point, it's me and the, me and the Tector are going after these these mobs. Uh, while the other two deal with the uh, Force Spawn and the other Lumen Mechs. And then once you've cleared up that up, deal with the rest of the mobs right there. And then afterwards, you get two spawns to, uh, two sets of spawns to the north and the south. You get some uh, ultimate draconians right up here, and at the south is four spawn, along with the Grenada, which is that bug thing which likes to go underground a lot. So be sure to kill that thing quickly so it doesn't waste all of your t uh, your party's time. And so right here is in the twall. I'm charging up for a full connect because this. All, all the uh, Draconians here are lined up really nicely. And the full connect launches and I kill most of the mobs right there.
So right here, where um, I'm dealing with these draconians alongside our Tector. And then once we've done that, which if if the other side clears up first, just just quickly rush to the other side and help them, and help your the rest of your party out. And then next up, you get another emergency code, where you have to deal with these two uh, boxing uh, draconians. And you need to kill these with it, both of them in the time limit. So you've got a minute to do that. And so right here is another line of enemies. And since I am and like with the Draconians last time, I got a Falcon X ready and just launched it. And that also got me aggro of the left do bars. So I could stack them up with the uh, uh, the other one, and we kill them both, uh, not too far apart from each other. So next up is these uh, two dragons. Uh, what you want to do, or ideally, is to focus on one of them. And in this case, we focus on the right dragon. This is so we can get the other, the Vol dragon to stack up on top. Oh, with the Vol dragon, you want to destroy the bit on its tail so it's uh, gold armor. Uh, disappears and its weak spots uh, pop out. So unfortunately there they did split for a bit but it wasn't too much uh, trouble. Well it isn't too much trouble. And then once we've dispatched one of them, we go to the, the other one, and then just kill it as fast as possible. Now, before you go to the this this is the last part of the volcano area, and this is uh, depending on your class if you've got some sort of meter, maybe like Phantom Time, Hero Time any of the super strong things or like a 12 the 12 bars uh, depending on whether you use the wand or uh, soaring blades uh, save it up for the next area because having as much having enough as much burst damage for the next area is super important So here we just finish up the Vol Dragon and move on to area 3 which is the coast fighting Bar Lodos. So as you spawn in rush to one of the cannons so you can get some right, uh, DPS on Bar Lodos immediately. Before this section, well before the quest starts, choose someone from your team who will handle the harpoon. Uh, some, preferably someone who's good at aiming with it. Oh, and if you do get designated as the person uh, using the harpoon, take one of the machine guns at the top end so you're close to the harpoon when you've got the opportunity to strike. Alright, so 
this is one of the earliest opportunities you can shoot Barlodos, and I recommend you take it. So then, now you can your entire team can burst them. Now this is the time where you you ideally have the hero time finish or phantom time finish uh, ready at this point so you can burst down Barlodos' head before it goes back into the water. Of course, if he, it, if he does go back into the water, it's not entirely the end of the world. It'll just cost you a bit of time. Unfortunately, I didn't have the four connects ready by this point, so I wasn't able to get some big extra damage ready. And here I just jump onto one of the machine guns just to get a bit of extra damage. And then I rush in. If you've got some sort of ranged attack that can hit Barlodos from this far, uh, rush up to the front when this big ball appears and just use whatever that ranged attack because the machine guns cannot damage Barlodos at this point but everything else your but your photon arts can and your techniques as well so something like ill grants for example you can just keep blasting it at Barlodos or at Soaring Blades at 12 right here you can use light wave to whack it a few times and luckily for us Barlodos was in a uh, the HP range long enough for us to kill him during this section, uh, this point. And now, right here, while this cutscene's playing, you could see that you could still move, like down here with me. I used this to um, get an idea of where I am on the this carrier, because the teleporter to the next areas, or the moment Barlotus is, is killed. The teleporter to the next area spawns so if you can get to that tele you could get to that teleporter already and just not deal with this cutscene and start the next area immediately so like right here didn't see the entire cutscene got to the teleporter and onto the fourth area also another thing if if you're on you can also uh, get onto one of the cannons the um the machine guns or the harpoon during that cutscene if you do jump out of it immediately and you'll find that your camera is reset back to normal so you could find your way to the teleporter easily while the cutscene is still playing or or if you're already on a uh, machine gun or the harpoon you could just jump off while the death immediately as soon as the death cutscene plays and get to the teleporter that way. So now here in the Lilipa Mines, you want to split up your party to the east and the west. So right, so right now you want to deal with all of these uh, mechs so you so you can open the way to the next two areas. So the way we decide to split up is 2-2. Uh, two, two. Me and the Tector takes the East End and the other Etoile and the Summoner takes the West End. You can split however you'd like. You could go 3-1. For instance, three people take one side and then one person takes the other. It all depends on like how strong the one person is if you decide to go that route. But you definitely want to split up for this section. And for us, we uh, we found we figured that two two was a good split. And so here's another good spot to use Julius Nifter. You can see that our tech is also using Zondeal right there to get a few of the mechs, but unfortunately. 
Ah, unfortunately, right there, that's uh, a bit of a mistake on my part. Uh, the suction appeared on one... I was trying to aim it on one of the middle ones. But unfortunately, uh, it tug uh, the mag targeted one of the south ones. So it was a bit suboptimal, but we still cleared this pretty quickly. And then, if you're in the top area... I mean, the top area. I mean, the east side. Hop onto one of these cannons and then just start firing. Charge it all up to the to full and then blast it on all these lumen mechs. And for those on the south, the south, the west side, uh, whoever has uh, has aggro, uh, try and make it so the lumen mechs face towards. Uh, the west and that way the, the ones on the cannons can the laser cannons can hit the weak spots of the boreals much easier also panic is a really good um, debuff to inflict at this point because if the if the uh, big Lumen mech right here, the red one, is panicked. It, w it will, um, when it does its uh, s suction ability, it will suck in all the uh, other, all the burials into one area so the laser cannons can just blast through all of them at once. Yeah, as you can see right there, uh, Just wait a bit. <laughs> so as you can see, the red one is panicked, and when it does its suction, it ends up sucking up a few of the burials. So now the laser cannons can just blast through all of them at once. Now once that's done, both teams proceed to the next part. So for the east part right here, you've got two sets of uh, Signo beats. Dispatch them however you like. This is this isn't as good of a place to use Julia Snifter because there's only this uh, this one set of mechs to deal with. So Zondeal is a bit more preferable in this case, and the south side deals with the mechs down there as well and we'll get to it in a bit all right so when the west side finally clears out the mechs on that area you'll get access to uh some more orbital like more uh, more gun batteries more laser lasers basically it's not the same as the previous areas ones this one has uh, this one uh, targets from above instead so whoever, whoever's on the west side once that's once you've cleared all the mechs take up one of the cannons and charge it all the way up then blast it on the Varda boss over here because each blast will deal about 600 thousand damage so you definitely want that for this part and because there's two on the west side it will be dealing about 1.2 million per charge and just like that we've beaten the Vardasoma really quickly the tech to Zon deals those lumen, those smaller lumen mechs, and then we deal with the El Scudo over here by attacking its core at the top. Then you dispatch the cannons here real quickly. For the people on the west side, it's just more giant lumen mechs to deal with. Just kill those as fast as possible. Then, then join up. Then a um. Well, actually, once these cannons have been destroyed, a jump pad will appear. So 
the people on the west side can join up with the people on the east side and deal with the upcoming boss. It is also important to destroy all the Luin mechs on that west side so so the barrier up here can open. And as for me, why I'm opening my men menu right here, I realized at this point that I didn't have my marinade activated. So I got that immediately. And I at this I still have some spare Valentine's chocolate to use, which also gives extra stats for five minutes, so I might I just use that because why not? Okay, so at this point, a lot of you should already know how the Exegol fight works. You target the button on its back, which turns uh, Exegol into its attack mode and exposes its weak points even more and increases the damage it takes. And so all of you just wail on it and just like that, Exegol is down. And now, here we have the Epsilon Grands, and the entire party is together. Target the legs, so you can open its weak point. If you can cast text, try to burn. Uh, you can try to burn this boss, and it will down itself for a, w a bit. As you can see there, the weak spot opened when we destroyed one of the uh, guns on its legs. So now we're going to target the other one so it stays permanently opened. And here I used a Falcon X combo because I was in the perfect spot to use it. Instead of just spamming connects. Now, this part is quite important, the ruins area. So, you've got these five portals right here, and as Sierra says, you need to defeat any three of them. So, don't, sp do not split up uh, by each taking one port portal by yourself. Instead, uh, actually, you know what, let me, screenshot this and get into Photoshop right here. So we'll call this teleport. Mm. Let's make it red, shall we? Okay, we'll call this Teleporter 1, Teleporter 2, Teleporter 3, Teleporter 4, and then Teleporter 5 right here. So, each one leads to a different full spawn boss. So, in the case of number 1, the furthest left, you deal with Luther. Luther right there. And then number two is Apprentice. Number three leads to uh, Dio Hunal. Uh, number four is Elder. Apologies for the messy spelling, but hopefully you can you guys can read it just fine. And then number five leads to Gemini. You know what? 
advertising is so readable. Yeah, let's just get the text out. <laughs> Should have done this first. Okay, so for this area, you you guys before you while you guys are planning before this quest starts uh choose which ones you guys want to fight with gemini it does have its two forms the one where they're split up and then the one where they're combined so you will be waiting a bit when they do try to recombine so i don't recommend gemini There we go, we got Luther, we got Prentice. Luther, Apprentice, Dio Hunal. Then we have Elder at number four. And then Gemini. So in the case for my team, we decided to split into two teams to take out two of the bosses and then join up for the third one. So in this case, me and the Tector again went for number two to deal with Apprentice and the other Etoile and Summoner went for Luther. And afterwards, we join up in Teleporter 4 to deal with Elder. Now the reason we don't we didn't we didn't uh, take the Hunal is because it's the boss which has the two cores on its arms that you need to destroy, and those can be a bit finicky to target, and we'd rather not deal with that. So Luther and Apprentice were the way we went, and then finally Elder and Gemini. As I mentioned before, we don't want to deal with it with the time it takes to for it to combine. And so just in case you, you don't remember what those bosses are, this is the Dio Hunal. The elder version in there is uh, Omega Hunal. Basically all the bosses are the Omega versions. So Omega Angel, which is the Luther one, Omega Aprogena, the Apprentice one, and Omega Dranball, which is Gemini. So during this fight, we dispatch uh, both Luther and Apprentice pretty quickly at almost the same time right uh, during this fight I decided to risk it a few times with full connects mainly uh, mainly because uh, the core the red part on Apprentice is her weak spot, so I thought, oh, I might get a few hits on that with the full connect, but unfortunately I didn't. And there we go, Luther and Apprentice are down, then we jump onto Teleport 4 to deal with Elder together. Yeah, 
it sucks that Elder likes to dash a lot when he has his sword out. So once you've done that, there's a new teleporter that appears at the back. Take that out immediately. And if someone has Julia Snifter available, this is a good time to use it as well. Uh, aim towards the Ringarda, the white boss right here. And the reason why I say to target that is because it doesn't get affected by the suction from the mag, so it, it'd be best to get the smaller enemies to suck up into that. So you target all the small enemies and the boss at the same time. Oh, hello. Don't... Oh no, did the video die on me? Oops. Oh, there we go. Okay, so, like, when they were sucked in, I took the time to do a full connects combo because they were all stacked up like that. And then this was a bit perfect because even though the suction was all gone, the sword, lumen, the, um, sword wielding Lumen Mechs decided to stay on top of the boss. And we also got the weak spot. We also destroyed the um, rings that the boss releases and destroyed those so the boss is down as well. And right here I got the perfect chance to do a full connect. So you just you target the red core right there to deal as much damage as possible. And then just finish off the boss if you haven't killed it at this point. Okay, so this next point is the reason why I suggested to have the person with the fastest loading time uh, host the quest. And that's because in the next area, you're, it's basically the Persona fight. So you load up onto the platform which in which like, your party starts the quest from and only the host can activate the panel. So you want the host to get in there ASAP to activate the panel as fast as they can. Which, hence why, fast person with the fastest loading time, let them host this quest. And also, in terms of the amount of time you need for this fight, by the time you get to the Persona, ideally you want about 4 minutes 30 seconds, or 5 minutes to five minutes left on your clock if you if you don't the cutscenes are gonna eat, totally eat up all that time so at this point everyone you should be familiar with the persona fight so yeah, as you could see right there our host was already on the panel immediately and luckily, you don't have to wait the 30 seconds for it's for the teleport. It just it's just a few seconds then you're all in. And now as for the persona fight, there is no RNG on what masks persona uses. He will always use elder and then apprentice afterwards. So elder, apprentice, persona. That's all you're dealing with. No trolling from um uh Gemini. Which is very convenient, otherwise Gemini would have just would obliterate everyone's times if they end up getting that form by accident. So as usual, you can stun the boss with uh their weak the tech their weak the element they're weak to. As and as for our team, we decided to uh focus on the mask. So, and not waste any time on the orbs on the side. Although, for some teams, you may be getting at least one orb uh, destroyed would help. 
but I, I think a lot of people hate dealing with the orbs on um, Elder, so it's up to you whether you want to go for the mask or deal with the orbs. But do note that uh, this st stun animation for um, when you destroy the orbs does take quite a bit of time, so if you do 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 get the stun, at least make sure well try to make sure that there's still a sizable chunk of health on Persona left. And as you can see it trans he uh, put on the apprentice mask. Again we just wailed on the mask. And to be, f and we also got the burn, the burn on the apprentice here, which is also super helpful. Getting a lot of damage in as well. Here, I thought I could, I could get away with the full connect, but it only dealt 30k damage right there, so that was a bad time to use it. So yeah, overall, this is just the same as any persona, any persona fight that you do on the uh, ultra hard in particular. Oh and one thing I should have noted about Apprentice, the Apprentice mask, is while persona is switching to the Apprentice mask, you can actually damage persona while, while he's doing that. So if you're right up there um, alongside Persona while he's changing to the Apprentice Mask. Just just throw whatever damage you can at him while the cutscene's playing so you don't waste any time during that. And the summoner is asking for the D-band there, not because they're squishy or anything. It's because uh, the pet they're using, Synchro, is a squishy pet but deals a lot of damage. So they just want the survivability of their pet to be quite up there. And then with Persona, you want to target the uh, target its core rather than the mask. Because it's already an exposed weak point, so you want to be dealing maximum damage right now. And thanks to the fact we're all focusing down on it, we've already destroyed part of its uh, armor. So, and if you're in the twelve, using full connect combo is a bit risky on Persona, unless it's down like this, which is why. I <laughs> So we're in the damage check portion right now, and luckily I had two full bars of um, my meter ready, so I decided to use both of them to get a full connect on both damage checks right here for a beefy 2 million damage. Even more because of the Tector's uh, Xanverse. And so right here you just need to wail on Persona some more until He's pre he prepares for phase four. Now this last part is going to go by super quick, and as you can see, we've still got a like a, we still got a minute twenty. Now, unfortunately, at, for this scene, you can't damage Persona, so you this one you'll have to wait it out. So. While that cutscene was playing, I set up a full connect and I got a good hit on the mask right there. And there you go. That's the that's the entire persona fight. You don't have to deal with the sword phase for that long. 
and voila, that is the limited quest right there. Now, as with the loot, as far as I'm aware, or at least I've heard, the drop rates are at least are really good if you manage to S rank with the Steel series being a near guaranteed drop as far as I'm aware, or as I've heard. But I, unfortunately for this run, I didn't get one. I just got the usual loot. Uh, I'd also like to note one more thing. For the... For, uh, to actually get the S rank at this point, Persona needs to die before the timer hits zero. If Persona is not dead by then, for so for example, the timer the timer is over, but uh, Persona is but you kill Persona after the timer is finished, you still get the drops, the um, well the Persona's uh loot table becomes a part of the actual loot at the end. However, you won't get the S rank for it. So, yeah, just make sure Persona dies before that timer runs out. Okay, is there anything else that I missed? I don't think there's anything else I missed. Um, I guess I'll go over some classes that would be useful that could be really good here so the scions are definitely good especially um luster luster can definitely make a quick work of a lot of these enemies um phantom is also really good especially if you're a team that are that's uh all using phrase decay that's definitely going to speed up a lot of fights oh fomal Fomel Luster as well can also deal. Actually, it might be better to go over the classes that might not be a good idea. Well, as mains anyway. Um, so Hunter, Hunter main, I don't think would be that great with dealing damage. Aggro, as in, as for aggro, they'd be amazing, but not so much for damage and they don't exactly contribute much to team damage outside of inflict being able to inflict gel on themselves so maybe not hunter main but some but there might be some comp out there that could work but i'd assume that they they have uh, god tier units on them for that to work um one of my uh, friends did it with a Phantom, Tector, Luster, and I forgot what the fourth one was. I think it was another Luster, two Lust. They went with two Lusters. Yeah, yeah, Tector, Fighter, two Lusters. Pretty sure that was their comp. So yeah, basically, despite how tight the time limit on this quest is, it. As long as you're a coordinated group, your team comp can be fairly flexible. As far as I'm aware, like even force force works. Braver, I'm pretty sure can work too. Oh, bouncer definitely works, especially if you're a bouncer luster and you know how to do the photon blades cancel. Wait, yeah, photon blades. Yeah, being able to cancel uh, chain photon blades together. And bounce, and bounce has pretty good amount of AOEs and can do techs, can cast techs as well. So yeah, that's the limited time quest in a nutshell. Hopefully it gave you guys a bit of an idea of what to expect from that quest. 
it's uh, quite quite a fun one to do especially optimizing yourselves um, as you go along I guess the biggest things to look out for are um, well the things to think about are being able to stack the enemies together especially the bosses uh, get, getting the harpoon shots on Barlodos and then uh, splitting up in uh, the Lilipa mines and then deciding which portals your teams are going to take with the portals with the portals in the ruins you could you could also go like as a full team taking each of the portals down once at a time that's all that should also be viable but then you'd be uh traveling uh each player would be traveling uh three times to get to the portals so and with this 2-2 two -two split we uh, we own one team just needs to go. Uh, actually, all of the players would just need to travel twice to the teleporter since they're only taking down two, and then finally the third, the final one, which appears at the back over there. So yeah, consult with your teams. Uh, what you want to do. Which portals you want to take down? You feel free to take down the same portals as we did, or follow l literally what we went through. As long as, as long as everyone's got really good gear and knows what to do with their class, you'll make it through just fine. So that was the general gist of. Um, how this run went so thank you guys for watching up to this point and this is professor prinny signing off take care <laughs>